Now that we've gotten into forces, uh, we can really start to look at some complex uh, things that are happening around our world, really start to understand how our world works, uh, and even lead to some uh, really practical knowledge that we may use outside of our physics classroom. Uh, and that's exactly what I'm going to show you uh, here in, this, uh, in the video today. Can I have a drink? Sure, man. No matter what you're drinking, everyone appreciates a good bar slide. Uh, so let's go ahead and go over to the, uh, the whiteboard and see how you can be as cool as I am and perfect your bar slide technique and serve your drinks in style. Okay, so there are a couple different ways that we can do this problem, uh, but the one that uh, I'd like to do is uh, actually try to figure out what the coefficient of friction is between uh, the glass and, and my table. Um, to do that, we need a little bit of information, although uh, almost all of it we can get from the video. Um, so we can look at how how um how far the the glass sl slid. Um, I, I had a pretty good view of that. It slid about three feet, or let's say let's say about one meter, just to just get an approximate number. And um, the, you know, the time it took was around one second or so. We could go in and go with the video and actually get exact numbers, but let's just go with this for now. I think it's it's going to give us a close enough answer. Um, so, uh, the trick is now is we need to fi figure out something about the acceleration, basically something about the motion that happened, and from the motion we can then go back to the forces and, and see how those relate. Um, so it actually took me a couple of tries, in fact this is the second or third video I made because I actually had to figure out how to do this the correct way, but I think the quickest way to do it is this way. Um, we know that the average velocity um, is just equal to the change in distance over the time, or in this case, it's just the you know one meter over one second. So the average velocity was one meter per second. Okay, um, but that doesn't tell us anything about the actual starting and stopping final velocity, except that we know that the average velocity is just equal to the initial uh, the the final velocity plus the initial velocity divided by two. Well, th we know that the final velocity is just zero. The thing stops eventually. And so the the um, the 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 um, final velocity is just two times the average velocity. So uh, so so the, the initial velocity is just two meters per second. And that's kind of a funny thing, actually, about any time we have something that's either uh, starting or stopping. So if the initial or the final um, velocity is zero, then the the average velocity is just half of, of either the final or the initial one. So, okay, so we got the final velocity, the, the final velocity is, uh, or the initial velocity was two meters per second. Um, now we can go in and find the acceleration. We know that v, the, v at the end was equal to V zero plus the acceleration times time. We know that the final velocity was zero. Um, again, we have the initial velocity, so we'll just get the V zero divided by T gives us our acceleration, which is just um, two meters per second divided by our one second, um, which just gives us, a, a, oops, uh, getting too excited here, um, which just gives us a um, acceleration of two meters per second squared, okay? And so that's our acceleration, okay? Our acceleration is two meters per second squared. Um, great, now we're ready to actually do our analysis of, of what happened. Um, so the glass basically, while it's sliding, Okay, our, our, here's our bar glass, here's the liquid in it. Um, while it's sliding, let's go ahead and do a free body diagram on this thing. Um, so there are a couple forces. Of course there's uh, gravity because it has some mass. There's also the normal force pushing up on the bottom there. Keeps the glass from falling through the table. Um, there's no force in the right direction, but there is a force of friction that's slowing this thing down the whole time. Um, let's go ahead and draw that right at the right at where it's acting, which is going to be um, right here, right at the bottom. So then there's a force of friction. Okay, so um, 
let's uh, go through and actually do our analysis of the x, the forces in the x and y. So first thing we can do is the x. x is going to be easy. So the sum of forces in the x directions, there's just one direction, or one force. And again, I'm using our, norm, our standard coordinates, x, y. There's only one force, which is the force of friction, which is going the negative direction. And that's just equal to the mass of the glass times the acceleration. Okay. Um, so uh, what we're trying to find is, uh, um, is, is this force of friction. Now we know, uh, um, we, we know we can relate it if we know what the mass of the glass is. And I, I estimate actually that the mass of the glass is probably about a, I don't know, about a half a kilogram or so. It's about a pound or so. Um, uh, so we can find um, the force of friction because we already found the acceleration. Uh, so we know this and we know this. So we can find the force of friction, but let's let's take it a little further and let's realize that what we actually want is the coefficient of friction. Um, the coefficient of friction is defined as um, it, it, in in this case for kinetic friction, it's it has this thing called mu. Mu is just uh, the friction from uh, that basically it has something to do with the material. It's basically um, the, how how sl how slippery two things are when when they're touching each other. So if you imagine me, if I did a piece of rubber sliding across the the table, um, it would be, it wouldn't go that well because um, rubber and and it ten tends to have a very high coefficient of friction. Uh, glass and wood and polished wood both have pretty low coefficient of friction. So we're probably going to find something pretty small. But so the the force of friction is this my is this mu. And then you just multiply that by the normal force. Basically, what that's saying is that um, the 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 force of friction is basically how slippery something is, and then how um, how much uh, force there is basically between uh, the glass and and the wood. If that makes any sense, or how hard the wood is pushing up on the glass. Okay. Now that's about as far as we can go right here. We can um, we can solve for mu. All right, so it's equal to ma. We can solve for um, we can solve for mu. And get that that's equal to m a um, over uh, normal force. All right, um, but I need the normal force to actually get anything out of this. Uh, this this doesn't actually tell me that much. I'm not going to get a number out of it. So to do that, we need to go back to the y equation. So now we're going to look at the sum of the forces in the y direction. Okay, and there are two forces in the y direction. There's the normal force, and there's gravity, which is pointing in the minus y direction, which is why I put a minus in it. That's equal to mass times acceleration, but in the y direction, there is there is no acceleration, so that's just equal to zero. The other way to say this is that the normal force is equal to the force of gravity, and the force of gravity is always equal to the mass times gravity, times g, acceleration due to gravity. Okay, so that gives us the normal force. Let's go ahead and plug that back in. We get that mu is equal to minus the mass times the acceleration divided by the mass times gravity. If you notice, the masses are actually going to cancel out. It turns out that it doesn't matter how much stuff is in there, which is important because if I, that means if I fill my glass up twice as far, um, the coefficient of friction wouldn't actually change. Um, it might change the, the rest of it with how I, how I have to press it, uh, how hard I have to push it. But um, it turns out that the coefficient of friction um, it doesn't change the, the ratio of acceleration to gravity. Um, let's see if, uh, if we see anything else. Um, so now we can go ahead and plug in our numbers. Um, I'm going to just do this over here because I have more room here. Uh, one thing to note is that I wasn't completely clear when I solved for the acceleration here. The acceleration, um, if you notice, if you remember, the glass was going in this direction, all right, and it's slowing down as it goes in that direction. So that's the velocity. That means that the acceleration is is going the other way. The acceleration is slowing it down, and so the acceleration is actually going in the negative x direction. So I should have actually called this minus two meters per second squared. Um, and the, the 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 place where I um uh, uh, um where I uh, messed that up was uh, right here where I when I um when I subtracted uh, v zero over I should have gotten a minus sign so then that would have been minus two and then we would have gotten that okay so going back over here now that I've got all the minus signs correct um, we have minus mu times or sorry um. Uh,
minus the acceleration, which is minus 2 meters per second squared, divided by gravity, which is just 9.8 meters per second squared, or we could just call it 10 for sake of this calculation. And so we get 2 divided by 10, or that the coefficient of friction is 0 0.2. And that's our answer, and that's pretty reasonable. Um, if you look at, uh, um, for instance, um, wood against uh, uh, wood against metal, for instance. Um, so if you have wood, uh, wood uh, polished wood sliding against metal, it has a coefficient of friction of about 0.2 as well. So it's probably pretty similar. So that gives you some idea about how to deal with friction. Um, again, if you notice, it isn't actually anything that different. The the only real difference is that you have this new formula of uh, minus mu. Fn for the force of friction. Other than that, it's just our normal force problems, um, and you just go through it the way we normally do, which is doing Fx and Fy separately. Okay, I hope that's helpful, um, and I hope you uh, now uh, drink all of your drinks, whether they be Coke or water or coffee, in style, uh, using your newly improved bar slide. Thank you very much.